guest is Mary Sherbert. She is a single parent. She's a wellness competitor. She's got some shows planned, and we're going to talk about life, work, the stage, and more. This is Christian Duke in my 9 to 5 attire here at Strength Addicts on Instagram Live, brought to you courtesy of TitanMedicalCenter.com, your go-to source for all the amazing therapies like Nectar of the Gods, Titan Complete, the new ECA Plus stack, the Aries Therapy, and so much more. So I'm super excited to have her on today because, again, it always makes me, you know, kind of think a little bit more when I have a competitor that is a single parent that has a full time job, but yet makes time in her day or his day, if we're talking about a guy to compete on the stage. Because as we all know, bodybuilding is an extremely, extremely selfish sport. So I'm going to bring her on. But before that, I also want to welcome everybody that came on. Thank you guys so much for coming on. We're 21 minutes late. I'm 21 minutes late. She's not. I am. Alpha Lily, what's up? Amazon Fit Mag. Check out Amazon Fit Mag. Some amazing content. Excellent photographer. Nurse Kim, who's also in the contest prep stages. She's killing it. Omni Muscle, what's up? Gabe Swole, wow. Thank you for coming by. Uh, Kavi, what's up? Bella Becca Fit. Uh, Jazz Dane Bricker. Barnett Farkasen, my gosh. My friend from St. Lawrence. Uh, we went fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, th- th- all those years. Uh, so, yeah, so let's bring her on and um, hold on one second here. The joys of Instagram, guys, the joys of Instagram. And uh, here, give me one second. She'll be on here. I'm trying not to talk. Coming on. What's Hi. up? Hey. I look like I just walked out of court. I'm so sorry, but thank you so much for being so patient. I really appreciate okay. it. Okay. So, uh, so you're, there's so much stuff that's going on. You're a single parent. You work full-time, you compete in probably the most, I would say the most uh, popular division, second only to bikini for now. It might get bigger than bikini, uh, which is the wellness division. So how did you get started with all of this, like weight training and and eating right and all that? Well, um, actually, one of my really close friends who's a men's physique competitor, his name's uh, David Stanford. He was the first person I ever saw uh, compete. And I just thought it was so great um, what he was doing. And at the time with his uh, fiance, they both were competing. And I just thought it was great. And then my life kind of took me in a different direction. Um, I kind of went through a few things, went through a divorce. And I was like, you know, I'm going to start working out. Maybe I'll get to that point where I can compete. Um, I'd been working out for about a year. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to take that leap. I'm going to get a coach. I'm going to start competing. And, you know, I just wanted to do one show and then one thing led to another and I've done three. I've been on the national stage um, and I just fell in love with it. Definitely. And I'm looking down, just waving at people and liking comments, you know, and I, I wasn't aware that you had been divorced and uh, obviously I don't want to like dwell too much on that. But I do want to say, that, you know, that in and of itself is a very mentally and emotionally draining process, even in the good divorces that are quick, you know, where there's no debt, there's no, you know, custody disputes, even in those, it can be draining. So I can only imagine the ones that are contested. I'm not like trying to pry, but I'm just saying that's definitely something that to juggle all that, you know, and then that that's a lot. Yeah, but I've really found a lot of um, uh, like peace and stability in contest prep. you know, a lot of consistency in my life because of it. So it really brings a lot of positive things to my life. And Mary, I I think it's really interesting that you say that because I've heard it not a lot, but enough. Uh, People actually like contest prep, like, whereas a lot of people dread it for some people, it's like a, a nice normal. Yes, I love it. I love the consistency of it. You know, I love, you know, exactly what you're going to be doing every single day. You do the same thing every day. Um, it just makes, you know, a lot that, well, my, my work life can be kind of inconsistent. That's the one consistent thing in my life. Definitely. So I hate to, I hate to like, you know, I hate to put a damper on things, but like, what is one part of prep that you don't like, or maybe not that you don't like, but that's a challenge to you even now after doing several shows. Um, I think, you know, just the challenge would be that when the dieting can get a little stressful, uh, especially towards the end, I think like peak week is probably the hardest part for me. Um, I get a little cranky during that, but, uh, now I've kind of like got it down where I know exactly what I need to be doing. Definitely. Now, one thing that I, that you had told me before the interview that I also thought was really, really cool. There's a lot of things that you said that I thought were cool, but one thing that I thought was really cool is the fact that you actually prepped an entire year. You, you trained 
before you jumped on stage. And a lot of there's nothing wrong with people that, that don't do that. But a lot of people, especially like maybe bikini or men's physique, again, not picking at them, but uh, you know, sometimes people, it's a bucket list thing where they might prep for a month or two and then just jump on stage and see where, where the chips fall. But you took an actual year before that. So what was that? Well, I knew, you know, actually I was going to do bikini um, when I started wanting to compete. And my goal was to do bikini. And uh, I was actually talked into it by my first coach doing wellness because uh, my legs are genetically a little bit bigger. So we thought we, I would do better. But, you know, I just didn't want to go on stage and not be competitive because I'm a very competitive person. And I didn't want to go on stage and not look good and not, you know, look like I belong there. That was my big thing. I wanted to look like I'm supposed to be on stage. I'm competitive with these other girls. Uh, and you know, just, just to kind of go back for me a little bit with Bikini and Men's Physique, I just want to make a clarification. Uh, a lot of people jump head first into those divisions and they get slaughtered. I mean, they're very, very competitive. And I almost say that they're the most competitive because Men's yeah. Physique and, and Bikini and Women offer the, the least Staged. And so everything that's like scrutinized, I mean, down to the second transitions, how they stand, how they breathe, it, it's crazy. So in, in a real way, bikini and men's physique are harder than the other divisions. So so I don't want you know, the thing is, people tend to jump into those sometimes without preparing and they get slaughtered, which is, you know, yeah. it shouldn't be a bucket list. That's, that's all it is. And with you, it's not. I mean, how many shows have you done all together so far? I've done three so far. I'm prepping for two more. Um, I'm four weeks out from Battle at the River in Chattanooga, and then I'll be doing Universe um, a couple weeks after that. I tell you, uh, Battle of the River is a huge show, very, very good show, uh, you know. Oh. Sorry? Oh, yeah. Alan Sizemore puts on a great show. He does a really great job with – I've done two of his shows now, um, and he's done a great job with everything. Yeah, Alan's amazing. Becca, uh, also, I mean, they they are just, uh, first off, they're a fantastic couple, but they're also at, you know, Carbon Culture events, posing seminars, obviously their shows. They, they're they very supportive of, of all the shows. Uh, Whitney Weiser's got a great show in Tennessee also. So they're all over the place, and, and they're just amazing people. And uh, and then you mentioned Universe, which is Big Steve's show, Steve Weinberger, yeah. and gosh, he what can you say about him? I mean, like all of his shows in the MPC Northeast are fantastic, but the universe is like the gem and the universe is a massive show. Uh, I'm not sure where it's being held this year. It's usually in TNX, New Jersey, but it's, it's an amazing competition. It's in New Jersey this year. Yes. And, and for a lot of people, you know, the Olympia is a Super Bowl of bodybuilding. For a lot of people, the Super Bowl of bodybuilding for the Northeast is the universe. I mean, they, they take that really seriously. No pressure though. And no pressure. I'm very excited to be there, though. Definitely. And uh, Rocco just joined the house. We got uh, 21 people watching live, which is great. But Rocco, I love him to death. And he's like ultra shredded. He's four days off from the stage. So I just want to send him a big shout out. But um, and he says we're going to do an interview next week. So I'm, I'm going hold, to hold him to that. But anyways, so um, tell us a little bit about work. OK, like I know that you work at a restaurant chain management, from what I understand. I don't you know, I, unless you want to give the name, but like, what's it like, again, being a single parent, not to put your business out there, but it is a lot harder being a single parent and being a career professional and then compete. How, how do you like make, cause you know, people say, I don't have enough time to compete. What do you say to them? You know? Um, I make the time a lot of time it's, you know, four o'clock in the morning or it's nine o'clock at night. You know, I have to find the time. Luckily, my daughter is super supportive. She comes with me to the gym. The gym I go to is very supportive of me having my daughter there. Um, I go to a small bodybuilding gym here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, um, Agogi House of Iron. They're really great, very supportive of all the athletes that go to their gym. Um, luckily, working for a restaurant actually makes my prepping easier. Um, as a restaurant manager, I get free meals. So, you know, we have chicken, we have salmon, all of it. So, you know, like broccoli, vegetables, salad. So it actually makes my prep easier because I have access to most of the things that are on my meal plan. Um, downside is, you know, my schedule is inconsistent. Um, you know, you're, you're scheduled where you, you're needed. Uh, you don't really get to have, you know, say what you're going to work and not work. But, uh, you know, you just make it work when you really want something and you want to have you know, you have a dream that you're passionate about, you do whatever it takes to make it happen. And, you know, 
if you have to get up early, you have to get up early. If you have to stay up late, you have to stay up late. But at the end of the day, you have to get it done. Absolutely. And I always uh, make this uh, point. I, I'm not a parent. I wish. I hope one day I'm 43. I don't know. I'm getting kind of old, but I hope. But uh, I think you're setting a great example for your daughter. And I think all competitors do the same for their kids because you're truly showing them, like, you're not doing this to get rich. You're not even making money unless you're a pro and you have to be at the Olympia Arnold level to do that. So you're doing this strictly out of love with a lot of commitment, a lot of patience, because as you know, uh, these things, you know, whether it's a national qualification, a pro card or a pro win, they don't happen overnight. And a lot of times you, you, you eat a lot of bad placements before you get a good one. So they see this, especially at a young formative age, and they're like, wow, I, I want to do what mom's doing. I want to do what dad's doing, you know? Yeah, she is there every step of the way. She's been, she, you know, she's get up, she'll get up with me in the morning to go to the gym. She's been to every show. Luckily, I have a very supportive family. Uh, my parents live nearby and they've helped me through all of it. They've been to all my shows as well. So I'm just very blessed with a very supportive family. Absolutely. And, and you've talked about that already uh, thus far in the interview about the support from your daughter and your family, the gym that you go to, which is great. Uh, one thing that I, did mention to you off camera, uh, and I'm hoping maybe you could address, what would you say to, I mean, to men and women, but more so women uh, that want to compete? You know, when I covered Masters Nationals for a few years, I, I met so many women in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, as you know, I, I'm sure you know, uh, bodybuilding is, is, is the fountain of youth for women, especially, especially for women, because men tend to fall apart in their 40s and 50s if they've been doing this a whole life. But, um, you know, I countless women in their 40s, 50s, and 60s that said, I finally got to compete. I finally, the kids were raised. They went off to college. My husband finally let me do it. Like, it's like, it's crazy. Maybe they don't say it quite like that, but that's what they mean. What do you say to women that want to do this like right now, but they don't have the support that you have? They don't have it from their significant other, maybe from their kids, maybe from their coworkers. What do you say to them? I say, you know, just take the leap. You know, you might, you don't always need to have all that support. I had a lot of people doubt when I said, hey, you know, I want to compete in bodybuilding um, because when I was married, I was almost 200 pounds. So I went from being, you know, overweight to suddenly telling people I was wanting to compete in bodybuilding competitions. And, you know, a lot of people really doubted that I was going to be able to do it. And, you know, I just, I wanted it. I wanted something different in my life. And sometimes you have to be selfish. Like this is a selfish sport and you just have to be selfish and say, you know, this is something I want and something that makes me happy and I'm going to do it, you know, regardless of, you know, what you have to say about it. Um, I, you just, sometimes you have to do what's best for you and let go of what other people have to say about it. Definitely. And, and sometimes others doubts makes for the best motivation, right? Yes, for sure. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I, I just think that, you know, something else that you said that I just want to kind of highlight is the fact that, you know, I think that a lot of people would give you support in the weight loss part of it. But when you talk about wanting to compete, they're like, hold on, that's, you know, you know, that's like, and, and I think I interviewed Carissa Michelle last week and, you know, she's lost hundreds of pounds and, and, and she has 50 more pounds to go. But then after that, she wants to get on stage and compete. And it's like, what she said, and also, um, also, what uh, Adam said yesterday's guest said, it's all about setting goals. Like these goals, they keep you engaged. They keep your mind engaged. And every time you achieve a goal, you have that sense of accomplishment. But then you want something else. Otherwise, you get bored. And there's a chance of regressing. Yeah, that's. I'm always looking for the next goal. You know, you know, I'm. The next goal is the next. You, I always keep going. What's next? What's the next level? How can I get better? I need to be better every time I do something. Uh, and that's, you know, in bodybuilding and in my personal life, I'm always striving to be the next best version of myself. Absolutely. So can you tell us a little bit about your coach? Because I know you said you had a coach and I know you said a couple shows. Uh, so uh, maybe a little bit about that. He is uh, his name's Zach Anderson. He is really great, uh, super knowledgeable. Uh, we just started working together in January, and we made some really great progress from me coming off nationals. We took um, an off season till just about a couple weeks ago. We started prep about four weeks ago, um, and everything's going really well. It's probably the best prep I've done out of all the shows. It's very smooth. Um, the results are coming really well. I'm very happy with him. Uh, he knows a lot. <laughs> I'm, I'm very glad in my corner. And are you scared? I, I, I think I know the answer, but it's an important question. Are you scared to ask your coach a question? Is the communication good? 
Oh no, never scared. He, we are completely open with everything. You know, he never makes me feel like, uh, I sh I'm dumb about not knowing something or having a question or wanting clarity on something he's asking for. He never pushes me to do anything I don't want to do. He's, I could call him anytime day or night and he'll answer and, you know, all he wants is, you know, to see me be successful and for us to get to where, you know, I want to be, you know, and that's what I wanted to hear, because that's great, because a lot of times I, I always tell people, you know, I've been doing this a long time. I've been on the media side for a long time. And if you're scared to ask your coach, if you uh, don't want to disagree with your coach or if your coach makes you do something you don't want to do, that's not a good fit. And some people, they, they will just keep at it for show after show till like finally something happens. So I think it's great that you can communicate. You can talk to many times, but you're not scared to ask some questions. That's great. Oh, yeah, I he's fantastic. And he, you know, I can count on him for anything, you know, with I wanted to switch shows. He was all for it. He's like, just let me know what you want to do when you know, when do you want to start prep? We got this like, he's like, you are looking fantastic. He keeps my confidence up, keeps me motivated. Um, anytime I feel like maybe I'm not ready. He's like, No, look at what you've done. And reminds me how much work we put in to get to this point. That's really good. I don't hear that often. That's really good. Look what you've done. I think that's awesome because it's like, you know, you've got like accomplishments in the past. It's not all about the future, about the next show, the next prep, the peak week. It's about what you've done. I think that's really important because it gives you like, you know, you know, you know, you can do it because you've done it before kind of thing. You know, I think yeah. that's so I guess the last question I have for you uh, could have been the first could have been in the middle, but I want to know what mean to you like like of all the women's divisions why did you do wellness well you know at first i wanted to do bikini i didn't even know about wellness um and then my previous coach was like i really think you know you would fit into this division and i was like what is even wellness and i started looking at these wellness competitors like dr sunny andrews or nisha um you know all these women and i'm like oh my god they look amazing like i love the way they look I, you know, they don't, you know, they look like they have muscle, but it's not too, you know, like a crazy amount. And they're still very feminine. I have naturally larger legs. Um, so like, I was like, oh, I don't have to fight my genetics, you know, to do bikini and keep my legs at a certain level. I can grow my legs and use my genetics to my benefit and look the way I want to look and what I feel like looks really great, you know? So I was like, I love this. I was like, let's go, let's do wellness. Let's build this muscle and go. Definitely, and big kudos to J.M. Mannion and Johnny Styles and everybody that pushed Oh yeah, Johnny Styles, I love him. I do too, I do too, and Karen. So the thing is, it's great that this division is true because so many women, unfortunately, if they were in the bikini side or the figure side, they had to sacrifice muscle uh, to be able to compete, you know, and who wants to sacrifice? Yeah. Muscle? It takes so much time and effort to gain it. You don't want to intentionally lose it. So. Uh, so I want to wish you the best of luck on the two upcoming shows that you have. They're big shows, but uh, you've got a great coach and you've got a great work ethic, and I think you do really, really well. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me. Definitely, definitely. And please tag Strength Addicts and Wellness Competitors so I can repost you because I, I love everything about you and uh, definitely in the preps. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. Have a good rest of your day. Awesome. Thank you so much for your patience. And thanks, everyone. Tomasa, what's up from Louisville? Thank you so much for everyone that came in. For Mary Sherbert, this is Christian Duke, strengthaddicts.com. Thank you again.